I used to hate winters, especially in New York. It was cold and dark and gloomy. The sun would go down about 3 p.m. That's partly why I moved to Mazatlan. Here, it's the perfect temperature. It's 70 degrees and sunny. The best thing about winters in Mazatlan are the beautiful mandarins and oranges and all the citrus that grows. It's citrus season. Citrus season will make you happy. And no, we're not talking about a salad. Save that for another day. Today, we're making a mandarin vanilla pound cake. It's so incredibly delicious. It's like a ray of sunshine on a cold, dark day. It'll cheer you up. And if you like the sound of that, then make sure you hit like and subscribe, and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do for the batter is get all the dry ingredients done. So I already weighed this out. This is 250 grams of all-purpose flour. I've got some baking powder. And I don't like to sift, but because I live by the beach, um, a lot of times my baking powder and my baking soda get a little clumpy. And this is one and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and then I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then all I'm gonna do is just tap that in, all right? And then I'm just gonna whisk this together. It's important that you whisk all of your dry ingredients. You want all of the leavening thoroughly incorporated into the flour. That'll just ensure that you're gonna get a nice even rise on your cake. That is that, so the dry is now done. Okay, so this is one stick of butter. Again, to make it super easy, I didn't want you to have to like, you know, buy a pound of butter or like use a stick and a couple of tablespoons. This is one stick of butter, this is room temperature, but I wanted it to be really super moist. And so I'm basically gonna use a lot of like my favorite cake making tricks to make this particular pound cake. So one of the tricks that I often use is to add a couple tablespoons of just plain vegetable oil in addition to the butter. What this does, it's slightly richer, the vegetable oil, than butter. So butter is about 25% water or whey. So you get really great flavor, but you're also including water in the weight of the butter. So by adding a couple tablespoons of just regular vegetable oil, we're going to make the cake a little bit richer. We're gonna prevent some of the gluten from forming. It's gonna have a nice, more tender, more open crumb. The other thing that we're gonna be using is just a really nice orange liqueur. This is totally optional. It's gonna add flavor. The alcohol is gonna burn off, so don't worry about it. Um, but to me, a lot of times the orange liqueurs have a little bit of bitterness, which I think is a really nice counterpoint to the sweetness of the mandarin and all the sweetness of the cake. So I'm just gonna use a tablespoon of orange liqueur. And then the other thing that I'm using is vanilla paste. So if you have vanilla extract, totally use that. If you have a vanilla bean and you are feeling really extra, use that. I love vanilla paste. I love the flavor of vanilla, and to me, vanilla paste is the best of both worlds. It's liquid, like a vanilla extract, but you've got all those amazing vanilla beans which add sort of a, a rich muskiness to the cakes or to your pastries. I'm gonna actually use a tablespoon of this, and what that is gonna do, it's gonna almost make it, make the flavor like a creamsicle or an orange Julius. The other thing we're gonna do is, and this is another one of my little tricks, the more eggs you use, the, the tougher the cake is. And I'm just not a big fan of tough cakes. Uh, I like a very, very tender crumb. And so I made about eight versions of this cake to get to this recipe, and what I ended up using is one whole egg and three yolks. The white of the egg is what gives the structure to the cake. So when you start removing the whites and you only use the yolks, you're basically just using fat. So we're just layering fat upon fat upon fat, which is just gonna give you a rich cake, but also a really tender crumb. All right, and that is 
our eggs. Okay, so the other thing that I did in this recipe is I called for a weight, or I've given you a gram weight of the mandarins, mainly because sometimes they're small and sometimes they're large. So I am just going to create this. All right, so actually this is one of, gonna be one of my favorite parts about this video because I have bought this juicer specifically for this recipe. I have been coveting this style juicer for, I don't know, since the very first episode that I watched of Barefoot Contessa and I couldn't find one and I couldn't find one and finally for this episode, I decided I am going to search until I find this juicer and it is amazing. Highly recommend if you love citrus, this is an amazing juicer. So. Here we go. So this is my KitchenAid PSA. So this is my KitchenAid stand mixer. Um, it's about a year old. But one of the things that I was noticing is that the paddle wasn't very close to the bowl. And so I was getting a lot of butter and unmixed batter at the bottom of the bowl. And so I did some research and on YouTube, I found some videos that talked about how to adjust the bowl height. And so that's what I wanna do for you today is show you how to adjust your stand mixer. So there is a little screw on the part of the mixer where the bowl sits attached. And if you just turn the screw about like a quarter turn to a half turn, it will actually change the level of the bowl. And so there's a trick. You can drop a nickel or a dime in your bowl, put the paddle on, lift the bowl up and turn it on low speed. If the paddle passes over the nickel or the dime, then it's a little bit too far away from the bottom of the bowl. And then you adjust it and then do the same thing, turn it back on, and then you'll see that the paddle will actually start to move the nickel or the dime. In my case, I'm using five pesos. All right, so before we actually make the batter, we're gonna prep the pan. So I just wanna say something about this pan because it's, it's actually pretty special to me. One of my first assignments as a recipe developer for Food Network, this was like many, many years ago, I had to make 50 different quick breads and I did it in this pan. And I love this pan so much. This is a nine by five by two inch loaf pan. I feel like this is a really great size for banana breads, two pound cakes, or even a loaf of bread. It's, um, it's pretty standard, it's easy to find, um, and I just like this size. All right, so we're gonna prep this. First, we're going to spray this with nonstick spray and coat it with parchment paper to make sure that the cake doesn't stick. And then once the parchment is in, just give it another spray. And you want a nice inch of overhang on either side of the pan. This will help you lift the cake out of the pan once it's cooled. Okay, so now everything is completely prepped. I am ready to go. I can start this batter. The reason why I wanted everything prepped is once you start the batter, you wanna get it in the pan and get it in the oven as quickly as possible because the leaveners that are in the cake are gonna start acting as soon as we mix them together. So first thing we're gonna do is dump in the butter. And it's nice and softened. And I'm just gonna let this mix for about maybe 10, 15 seconds just to break up the butter. Now we're gonna add the sugar. Okay, and now I'm just gonna increase to about medium. I just want this to incorporate, and then once it's incorporated, I'll start adding the eggs. Okay, so now we're gonna scrape. It's really important to make sure that you scrape up any of the butter and the sugar that are on the bottom of the bowl. Now we're gonna start adding the eggs, just one at a time. So I'll put this on low. Okay, now I'm adding the salt. Okay, I'm gonna scrape down one last time before I jack the speed up. 
And then this next step is really important because we're going to incorporate air into the batter, but also we are going to change the nature of the proteins in the eggs. It's gonna stabilize the cake and it's also gonna give it structure. This goes up to high. And I set a timer for three minutes. Okay, so it's been three minutes and you can see like how light and fluffy and creamy it is. Okay, so now we're gonna add all the flavor. So first thing is the orange zest. So I'm gonna turn the mixer on low and then I will add the liquid. So this is the two tablespoons of oil, tablespoon of vanilla paste, and the tablespoon of orange liqueur. Okay, I'm gonna scrape it down one last time and then we will add the dry. So I'm gonna add half of the flour and then all of the orange juice and then the last half of the flour. And that will make sure that the flour gets incorporated into the butter and the eggs and won't develop as much gluten as if I just dumped everything together at once. So back up, back on low, and then half of the flour goes in. Okay, so that looks good. Now, it's probably about 95% mixed at this point. And now I'm just gonna take it off of the stand mixer and finish the rest by hand to make sure that everything is incorporated. Okay, so I'm just gonna gently fold the cake batter and make sure that any flour that's on the side of the pan, I'm gonna just incorporate into the batter. Okay, so now I'm just gonna scrape this into the pan. Okay, so now I'm gonna give it a couple of little or not. I'm gonna give this a little gentle tap. This will even it all out. And now we're ready for the oven. Now we're gonna work on the topping. So this is sort of the extra credit portion of the recipe. The standard glaze is uh, powdered sugar and maybe a little bit of orange juice or cream or orange zest. Um, and to me, like, I mean, that's fine. But to me, this is about celebrating the citrus season. So I wanted to make sort of a candied, marmalade sort of situation. And it's super simple. It's just sugar, orange juice, and cut citrus. So what we're gonna do is we are going to cut this in half. You need a really sharp knife for this. Um, I'm just basically gonna cut super thin slices, as thin as possible. Okay, so the thing about the mandarins here is that they're not seedless. So what you have to do um, if you have seeds is just take them out. So super easy, just pop them out. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut them into roughly half to three quarters of an inch pieces. So I'm gonna take the wedge, cut that in half, and then cut it in half again. Okay, so now we're going to bring this to a boil and then reduce it down to a bare simmer, put it on low. It's gonna cook for about an hour. It's gonna get thick and syrupy and really delicious. The peels are gonna get candied and really tender. So this is a cake that I made yesterday and this is some marmalade that I made yesterday. And so I just heated this back up because it's gonna be easier for the cake to soak in all of the juices if it's warm. All right, that looks pretty hot. All right, um, so pro tip, if you make this cake and you wanna take a picture for Instagram, do it in direct sunlight. The sunlight just glistens off the top of the oranges. Look at my Instagram and you will see the photos of this cake being shot in the sunlight. It is stunning. Okay, so now I have to wait till all those 
delicious juices get soaked into the cake. So it's gonna take a little while, but that's fine. I don't need to eat anymore. I've been eating this cake for the last two weeks. I'm just imagining like, like crane sounds, like me, me, me. The cake has soaked in all of these incredible juices and I have cut a ridiculously thick slice. I'm just gonna go into a little pound cake coma after I eat this. Oh, I'm so excited. This marmalade is so good. It gives you that texture that like a normal, you know, powdered sugar glaze is not gonna give you. It's so moist. This is exactly the kind of crumb that I love. I really want you to make this cake. It's so easy. It doesn't take long, obviously. You can always make that salad tomorrow or like, you know, eat the salad first, then have the cake for dessert. And as always, if you like me, if you like this recipe, if you like this series, if you like Sebas, make sure you hit like and subscribe and you will be notified as soon as there's another Sweet Heat episode.